Welcome to the Fiji Symposium 2019 in Cairo, Egypt. We're very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Mr. Luis Leva Martinez, who's the Director General of Regulatory Developments for the National Banking and Securities Commission for Mexico. Uh, Luis, welcome to the studio. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much for your, for your invitation. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, the new fintech law, which I believe has been passed uh, in Mexico. What are the main features of this legislation and how will it enable the goals of digital financial inclusion? First of all, it's, it's a law that it's unique in its type. It uh, brings together to the regulatory perimeter um, different phenomenons. The first one is e-wallets, e-payments. Um, also, it regulates crowdfunding in three types of crowdfunding, peer-to-peer, -peer, equity, and royalties, which is a very unique, specific type of, of crowdfunding in, in Mexico. Uh, also, it regulates the sandbox, uh, uh, one sandbox for regula regulated entities and another sandbox for non-regulated entities. It also establishes the regulatory framework for APIs for the complete system. Um, and also establishes all powers um, and for, for authorizing, for sanctioning and for regulating this, this, whole, this whole sector as, uh, as a whole. Also, it um, brings to the regulatory perimeter when financial entities deal in virtual assets. So it's a very holistic approach towards the, f the fintech phenomenon. As we see it, um, this, this law, uh, what, what, um, it's, it's, it's unique because of, of its approach. But um, it also states the, the, the road ahead for, for fintech in, in Mexico. Years ago, we started seeing that there were emerging platforms, but they didn't have the right ecosystem for not not only for existing but for for going ahead. So this law, it's general in, in nature. It's a principle-based uh, law, and um, it's it's a very it's an attempt to to regulate now but also to establish the foundations for, for what it's to come in, in, in the future. In this sense, we see that uh, the law uh, can establish very good foundations for, for financial inclusion through e-wallets, e which sh could be a first step in, in the ladder for, for financial inclusion, for example, or um, in inclusively in terms of, of completion of the making a complement to the, to the market in terms of of lend of in the lending market in terms of, of crowdfunding what and the potential of attending that certain people are, that do not have nowadays a credit from a bank for example now you've taken the time to, to be here at the Fiji symposium I wanted to find out what are the the main takeaways that you hope you'll get from this oh many 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 I believe that um, there's are, there are many things that come together uh, across and, and, and intersect with what we are doing. For example, in terms of cybersecurity, you don't you don't only need to to develop a good pro product in terms of the customer experience, but but it is needed also to have a robust. Um, framework of, of security around it because it's a matter of if you trust what you are um, trying to develop so there are many there's a good discussion outside in, in, in that matter and that's one thing I, I take away from to Mexico. You touched upon it but what, what is the link really between the, the fintech sector and digital financial services in Mexico? The link? You have links all around all across the, the, the value chain for example um, in terms of the, the, the onboarding of clients, FinTech has new solutions that traditional entities don't have, for example. That's, that's the, first, the first thing. Um, in terms of the products, there are certain products that are competing directly with, with, the, with traditional products, and there are other products that are complementary. And in, in the back, there are also new technologies that fintech are bringing that banks, for example, or that other incumbents are, are trying to, to get also in their, in their processes. So you have um, lots of, of points of contact between fintech and, and, and the financial sector as, as such. And, and uh, finally, a question that uh, I've been asking a lot of the people who've been sitting in that chair is, what do you think it will take for the world's poorest people to prefer digital financial services over cash? And will digital financial services be enough for this to happen, do you think? Yeah, that's a good question, because it is, 
it's a multifactorial aspect. Uh, first of all, you have to think in the client. Uh, it's, it is a matter of, of, of the customer experience. The, um, it's not the same to send someone money in, in, in Valise than to pay you for a chocolate you just sell me. Um, the first thing is I have to, has to be available, it has to be low cost, it has to be well, well received by, by you, um, it has to be, um, uh, it has to have little, little frictions, none, it has to be easy to, easy to use and, and that's just one part of it. The other big part of it is you need a cultural change because um, you can have a very good um, uh, way to, to pay you through, through a cell phone but if, if in my culture I prefer to have the money in my pocket then it's, it's going to take time to, to, to teach people that it is best, that it is cheaper for them in, to, to make this type of payments for example. So um, it's not just a matter of having a good product and, and all the things that, that need that product to, to run correctly but it's, it is also a, a matter of, of cultural change. And do you think that change will come? Yes, 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 yes. When you start making um, things, uh, thinking uh, with a technological point of view, the, the, the growth is exponential. It, it is marvelous how people nowadays are live with the cell phone in, in their hands. In Mexico, for example, there is a st uh, statistic that the um, people y see that there are cell phones le like six hours per day, for example. There are, there are people that prefer to, to go to the dentist than to go to, to an office, to a bank office. So, so the mind is, is, is changing. We, there's another set in, in, in the mind. And hopefully it's not a, it's not a matter of, of many, many years ago to, to break this through. And the younger generation, of course, yeah. uh, will be hopefully driving that, uh, that change. And in terms of regulation, what regulatory atmosphere, what regulatory landscape do you think will promote this? Mm. There are at least two, two ways to promote it. The first thing is to create um, good environments for, for, for this. And what I mean is to, to create um, an ecosystem that is, that is certain for everyone that the payment it's going to flow correctly, that my money is going to be there, that I'm not going to get intruded. So, so the, uh, you have to build trust uh, around, around the, 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 the system. And, and the second thing is that there are other mechanisms in terms of policy to push people towards using digital finance. For example, you can, you can have tax discounts, you can have um, certain discounts or certain um, ways to, to push public towards um, paying them, for example, in the, in the, their wages, um, make, making the, the, the systems and, and government programs to, to flow through, digi through digital channels. So, so they are also not just in the ecosystem, but the government using that, that ecosystem, that's, that's a very good start. What role can governments play no. to enhance the usage of digital financial services at the national level? Now, well, that's the, that's the, first, the, the obvious one is that the government should go digital. That, that's the first thing. And go digital in, in all aspects. For onboarding uh, people to, to national registries, from onboarding uh, people to programs of assistance, assistance programs, and uh, to do their payments through, through, digital, through digital channels. That's the, the very first, the first thing. If you want And Mexico is making a substantial advance of that. GOB, M MX, uh, GOB, uh, MX uh, as well, I understand, is, is definitely making inroads in that direction, isn't correct, it? Correct, correct. We have APIs for, for um, government information. And so it, it is a quite change in, in, in paradigm. And, uh, and the other thing is to establish by, by policy certain uh, certain measures in order to, to make cheaper the, 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 the transaction costs for, for going digital. Great. Well, thank you very much for, for joining us in the studio, Luis. Thanks for those valuable insights. And uh, hopefully we'll catch up with you again at some stage in the future. Of course. Thank you for the invitation. Great. Cheers. Great to be here. Thanks. <laughs>